If you're trying to lose fat, chances are you've tried Googling something like what to eat to lose fat. And in this video, I'm gonna be breaking down everything that you need to know from a nutrition standpoint in order to actually lose fat once and for all, kind of like these guys did right here. So there are five topics that I'll be briefly covering today that should give you a wholesome picture of what proper nutrition for fat loss entails. The first one is gonna be calories and energy balance. The second topic is actually two topics, macronutrients and micronutrients. Then we're gonna talk about meal timing and frequency. After that, we'll dig into supplements. And last but not least, we'll talk a little bit about alcohol and how that can impact your fat loss goals. So first things first, calories and energy balance. Now, when we're talking about fat loss, energy balance is the most fundamental concept or the primary requirement, if you will, to actually ensure that fat loss occurs. So what is energy balance? So energy balance is a relationship between the energy or the calories that we consume in the form of food and drink versus the energy or calories that we expend through metabolism and other physical activity. So this is the relationship of calories in versus calories out. You might have heard that saying calories in versus calories out. And it determines our body weight, our body composition, as well as our overall health. I think the simplest analogy that I can come up with here is think of like your bank account, right? You can put money in your bank like eating calories and you can take money out of your bank to spend like going for a run or doing a workout, for example. Now with energy balance, there's three outcomes. There's eating in a calorie surplus, there's eating at maintenance calories, and then there's eating in a calorie deficit. So when you eat more calories than you burn each day over a long period of time, your weight's gonna begin to increase. And that's how we gain weight and that's how we gain fat. So this is what's referred to as a calorie surplus or a caloric surplus. Uh, the amount of calories needed to increase your current weight. But on the other hand, if you were to eat exactly the amount of calories that you burned each day, your weight would just stay the same. It wouldn't change at all. Now, this is what's referred to as maintenance calories or the amount of calories needed to maintain your weight. And lastly, what we're talking about here today, fat loss, is if you were to eat fewer calories than your body burned, your weight would begin to decrease over time. And this is what we call a calorie deficit or the amount of calories needed to decrease your current weight. And so I'm gonna say this right here. In order to lose fat, you need to be in a calorie deficit. By definition, if you're you're not losing weight, you're not in a calorie deficit. Now, what matters most here is what we're doing over long periods of time consistently. It's not what you do. It's not a single meal or a single day or even a single week. What matters most with energy balance is what we do over long periods of time. So no one got fat from eating a single cookie, just like no one got skinny by eating a single salad. It's time for us to play the long game and strive for consistency, not perfection. So that's about it on calories and energy balance. I could get into more things about how we burn calories and, and different sources sources of calories, but we'll save those for more in-depth videos. Next, we're gonna talk about macros and micros. So after calories and energy balance, uh, there's two classifications of nutrients. We have macronutrients and micronutrients. Macronutrients are needed in a much higher quantity than micronutrients, which is why they're called macronutrients. And they consist of protein, carbohydrates, and dietary fat. While micronutrients we need in a lot smaller quantities, which is why we call them micronutrients, um, and consist of all the vitamins and minerals that are you know necessary to health, performance, and just losing fat, building muscle, all that stuff. So let's dive into macros a bit here. So we just talked about calories and macronutrients are what make up those calories. So the foods that we eat have a different mix of protein, carb, and fat, but individual foods or ingredients tend to have more of a particular macronutrient than another. For example, chicken breast is a great source of protein. There's little to no fat in it and no carbs in it. Something like a banana is a great great source, a p almost a pure source of carbohydrates. Whereas something like avocado oil is just 100% fat, maybe not 100%, I don't know. But you see, not all calories are created equally and they definitely don't have the same effect on the body. So a thousand calories of protein will affect your body a lot differently than a thousand calories of fat will. But all three macronutrients are important and should be included in a fat loss diet. Disclaimer, you do not need to cut carbs in order to lose fat and you don't need to cut fat in order to lose fat. It really just comes down to calories, but macros are important too. So taking a look at protein. Protein has four calories per gram. So if you look at the back of a food label and you look at how many grams of protein there are, you can take that, multiply it by four, and that's roughly the number of calories 
calories that you're going to get from protein. Now, why is protein important? And why did I start talking about protein first? So protein is structural, meaning it builds things in the body like bones, muscle, cartilage, organs, skin, blood, hair, and nails. And we need enough protein to build muscle and recover from our training sessions. And in my experience, when my clients can go from eating not enough protein to eating enough protein, they tend to see really good fat loss results. One, protein is very satiating. It's going to keep you full. And I think most importantly is what I've found is that when you can get your protein number up and get that really high, it tends to really cut down on any urge to snack or anything like that. Um, and so protein can be very beneficial. Now taking a look at fat. Fat has nine calories per gram. Now for all you math wizards out there, that's over twice as many calories per gram as protein. So as you can see, fat packs a lot of calories into a very small package, more than twice as much calories in the same size package. Now, the main role of dietary fat is to provide our bodies with energy, which is really well equipped in doing so, which we just pointed out since it has over twice as many calories per gram as protein does. But fat also helps balance our hormones and it gives us two fatty acids that we can't make on our own. Uh, linoleic acid, which is omega-6 fatty acid, and linolenic acid, which is an omega-3 fatty acid. More on that in later videos. Now, lastly, of our macronutrients, we have carbohydrates. So carbohydrates also have four calories per gram. Now, carbohydrates, what do they do? They're the body's fastest acting macronutrient source for energy, especially during high intensity exercise, such as resistance training. And our bodies break down carbohydrates into its simplest form, glucose, which our body needs a constant supply of. And since we can't make glucose as humans, we need a constant supply of it and we have to get it from our diet. And the easiest way to do that is to get it through eating carbohydrates. Okay, cool. So now moving on to micronutrients. So we need vitamins, minerals, and other compounds that are found in, you know, plants. We need them in the right amounts to perform optimally as well as just be healthy. So, you know, we need much less of these than we do macronutrients, which is again, why they're called micronutrients. Um, now I'm not going to cover every vitamin and every mineral and what they do because, well, that would be very boring. Um, instead, I'm just kind of going to go through some common themes and habits that you should kind of keep in place in order to make sure you're checking all the boxes when it comes to vitamins. So eating a wide range of whole, less processed plant and animal foods um, can help you get plenty of micronutrients easily and naturally. And then some foods in particular, especially colorful fruits and vegetables, um, are going to be a plethora of vitamins and minerals and other nutrients in there. So try to build your diet around fruits and vegetables. I think that's just great advice no matter what your goal is. And lastly, once you fill your diet with fruits and vegetables and these minimally processed foods. And if you're still having some weird symptoms, you know, it might not be a bad idea to set up a call with your doctor and get your blood work done. See if you might be deficient in one vitamin nutrient or, or you might be in excess of one um, vitamin or mineral. So get your blood work done. Talk to your doctor. All right, cool. Moving on to meal timing. So there are two things that I want to just briefly touch on in this section. That's meal frequency and peri-workout nutrition. So meal frequency just means how many meals you plan to eat each day. Now, for the most part, there's no benefit to a really high number of meals like six or seven and there's real no benefit to a really low number of meals like one or two somewhere in the middle between three and six meals per day is typically going to be optimal for most people probably three or four meals now the issue when you have such a low number of meals is that you have to cram so many calories into just a few meals that you're going to get really full and it can be kind of hard to digest now this can train your brain to only eat larger meals and develop an unhealthy relationship with food. Now, the same can also be said on the other end of the spectrum where you're eating six or more meals per day, consuming really tiny meals uh, that leave you hungry and obsessing over food. And, and you're just thinking about that next meal. Like, I feel like when I first got started in this, watching a lot of YouTube or whatever, you'd see these bodybuilders and they'd have like six, you know, Tupperware full of chicken, rice and broccoli. And that's fine. If that works for you, great. But there's really no benefit to doing that, you know, other than preference and hunger levels. So that being said, I typically recommend between three and four meals per day. And and then once you know the proper amount of calories and macro intake for your specific goals, you can just divide those numbers up by the number of meals that you're going to eat each day and start coming up with meal ideas. And there you go. That's how you're going to start losing fat. So that's meal frequency. Moving on to peri-workout nutrition here. So weird name. I have no idea why they call it that. But peri-workout nutrition just means the food that you ingest before, during, and after a workout uh, or a training session. And can has kind of been a controversial topic. And honestly, you know, as long as you're hitting your 
total daily calorie number, total daily macro numbers. Fat loss is gonna come, right? Just be patient. Now this stuff isn't gonna make a huge difference, right? But in my experience, when trying to lose fat, having a pre-workout meal of protein and carbs has been very beneficial to, to performance as well as just comfortableness. I wasn't starving. Um, so if you're currently dieting or trying to lose fat, it might be a good idea to consume some carbs pre-workout as well as some protein as your total energy intake is lower. So having energy in the form of calories right before a workout would be a good idea. So somewhere between 20 and 30 grams of carbs and protein is a good starting point for most people, but that's very individualized. All right, here we go. Moving on to supplements. So supplements are designed to fill the nutritional gaps in your diet. That's it. And assuming you don't have any natural deficiencies, supplements are not necessary in any way, shape or form. That being said though, supplements can be very helpful in the right situations. Besides the select few supplements, like fat burners are the first one that comes to mind, skinny teas, all that kind of crap, are just a waste of your money with little to no effect whatsoever. Um, but that being said, here's a list of supplements that I recommend and that I actually take personally as well. So first up is protein powder. Now there's nothing magical about protein powder. Um, you can definitely get all your protein requirements from whole food sources. But the thing about protein is that it's, well, there's two things. One, it's just very convenient. You know, you don't always have time to head out back and grill up a steak for your protein source, but it's a lot easier to grab a scoop of protein, throw it in a shaker, shake it up and you're good to go. You know, the other great thing about protein is that since it's or protein powder is that since it's in a liquid form, it's highly digestible. It's going to digest very quickly. Your body doesn't have to break it down like it would a steak uh, or other whole foods. So yeah, you can certainly get all your protein from whole foods, but protein powder just makes your life easier. Next up is multivitamins. So if you're consuming plenty of fruits and vegetables, which you should be after watching this previous part of the video, um, then a multivitamin isn't really necessary. However, it's not a bad idea to take kind of as like an insurance policy just to cover your bases, especially when dieting. So a lot of times what happens when people diet, they cut their calories down a lot. And in turn, they cut, you know, it's just less food overall, less food variety, less nutrients. So you could be in a calorie, like you need to be in a calorie deficit to lose fat, but you don't want to be in a nutrient deficiency. And so in those cases, and since this series is all about how to lose fat, I think it's important to take a multivitamin, especially when you're dieting, to make sure that you don't get into any nutrient deficiencies. But again, I also recommend speaking with your doctor, getting blood work done before consuming any vitamin or supplements, uh, just to ensure that you're not, you know, you're not going to go to the other way and start getting those vitamins or minerals in excess. So next up on the list of supplements that are actually worth your money is fish oil. So fish oil provides us with two fatty acids that have been found um, to have several potential health benefits like reducing symptoms of depression, decreased risk of cardiac health, decrease in blood pressure, and decrease in waist circumference. So one to two grams of combined EPA and DHA is what you're looking for here. So make sure you check the label of your fish oil so that you're within that range. Next up on the list is vitamin D3. So vitamin D is a fat soluble vitamin that is normally synthesized in the skin upon exposure from the sunlight. So if sunlight is lacking or you live somewhere like Seattle where, you know, it's cloudy all the time, then supplementing with vitamin D3 might be a good idea. Again, before you begin any supplementation, talk with your doctor, get your blood work done, and then think about taking it. Next on the list, one of my favorite supplements and one that I think just every single person should take no matter what is creatine monohydrate. So creatine is naturally produced in the human body. And in short, creatine is going to help with your performance. Creatine is used in one of our primary energy systems, which help power the first about 10 seconds of activity. And so supplementing with creatine can help your ability to perform in the gym and results in increased strength, power, and muscle mass when used chronically. So I would say take five to 10 grams uh, daily at any time of day. And that's a great place to start. Take it for the rest of your life. And you're good to go. Here we go. Last on the list of supplements that are actually worth your money is caffeine. So caffeine is the compound that provides about 90% of the effects in most pre-workout. Now there are some other beneficial ingredients in most pre-workouts um, that are, you know, worth their money. But the main thing, the main kick you're going to get from pre-workout is the caffeine. So if you want to save some money, simply just buy caffeine on its own, or instead of your favorite pre-workout, just drink coffee and ideally work out in the morning. So the caffeine isn't keeping you up at night, but we'll get into that in another video. Okay, here we go. Moving on to the last section of nutrition here. Okay, now talking about alcohol, alcohol is kind of weird, right? It's legal if you're 21, but at the end of the day, it's literally a poison and it's so common in our society these days, which is, if you sit and think about it, it's actually like really weird that we can just go buy this poison, chug it down, get all crazy. But anyways, that's not what I'm here to tell you. And I'm not here to, to persuade you to drink or not to drink, but I am here to highlight the effect that alcohol 
can have on your body and how it relates to fat loss, how it can potentially hinder that. And for the record, I myself, I am 28 years old. Whoa, I'm 27. I will be 28 soon. Um, and I enjoy drinking. I think it's fun, but I understand the consequences and risks. And I think you should too. So without further ado, let's get into it. In general, alcohol has calories and no nutritional benefit. So every time you're hitting the bottle, drinking a beer or whatever, you're packing in more calories, which as we remember from the top of the video here, calories in versus calories out, energy balance. That's how we lose fat. We need to be in a calorie deficit. And we're packing in these calories with alcohol that have no nutritional benefit, burning fat harder. So alcohol makes burning fat harder, not impossible, but harder. The other thing about the calories from alcohol is that our body has to synthesize and digest those calories first before it can start to digest and use the calories from food that we've eaten that day, or even better, burning from the fat on our bodies. It has to burn off the alcohol first before it can do any of that. The other thing about alcohol is it really messes up your sleep. And sleep is so incredibly crucial and beneficial to health, performance, well-being, mental performance, happy and even two drinks can significantly impact your sleep. So just be aware of that. Now, last thing I'm going to say here on alcohol in the gym. So alcohol reduces muscle protein synthesis, testosterone, and a growth hormone. Not ideal for building muscle or being, you know, productive in the gym. It also increases cortisol and estrogen, and it can cause strength loss. So, so alcohol can be fun for sure. No doubt about it. But don't let alcohol ruin your fat loss goals or worse, your life. Okay, that's it. So quickly to recap, calories are the most important thing when it comes to fat loss, and you need to create a calorie deficit if you want to lose even an ounce of fat. But calories are not the end-all be-all. We also need the right macros and micros in the right amount for optimal health, performance, and body composition. After you've checked those two boxes, it's time to consider how many meals you plan to eat each day and when you plan to consume those meals. Now, after watching this video, you can stop wasting money on useless supplements and just consider the ones on the list I provided earlier. Lastly, alcohol can literally make or break your gains. You might be killing it during the week and then lose all that progress every weekend when you go out and blow your load on booze. So don't let that be you if your goals are to lose fat. So there you have it. There's everything that you need to know about nutrition in order to lose fat. Thank you for watching and be sure to stick around for the next video in this series where I'll be talking all about training and what you should be doing in the gym in order to lose fat. And if you're interested in learning more about my one-to-one -one coaching program where I help you implement all this stuff based on your unique situation, make sure to hit that first link down in the description. And while you're down there in the description, check out the link for Thorn to get some fatty discounts on Thorn supplements, which are some of the best in the, in the industry. So if you click on that, it'll take you over to Thorn and at checkout, you'll get a sweet discount. So be sure to use that. But other than that, peace out. We'll see you in the next video, which will be right now because you're going to click on it.